With that intense rainfall uh, overwhelming our infrastructure in Metro Detroit, flooding homes and highways, we're taking an in-depth look at the environmental impact of, of the disaster. Now we're talking about diluted raw sewage in our waterways. Part of the problem has to do with our local combined sewer systems. Sewage mixing with storm runoff. Most of the time, these systems send sewage to a local wastewater treatment plant. But during heavy rains, they can be overwhelmed, leading to spills of raw sewage and storm runoff into our waterways. We've seen it happen time and time again. 7 Action News reporter Brett Cass takes an in-depth look at the damage this flood has had on our local waterways and what advocates say needs to be done to protect the environment. When you look at all this debris stacked up here in the bridge, you can tell just how high the Rouge River got over the weekend. And as that water has receded, it's brought with it a lot of sediment and other nasty pollutants and bacteria. The fast flowing water in the lower river Rouge is murkier than usual this week, just days after devastating rains flooded Metro Detroit. This is an unusual event, but high water is not unusual to the Rouge. And with climate change, we're seeing it a whole lot more. Sally Petrello works for the nonprofit Friends of the Rouge and has spent two decades monitoring the river's ecosystem. During the storm, the river crested well over the riverbanks, flooding Ford Field Park in Dearborn, damaging the river as it receded. And that causes a lot of erosion, and then you get a lot of sediment in the water, which makes it very difficult for the fish and the bugs that they eat to survive in the river. The heavy rain also flooded homes and highways across Metro Detroit, leading to a backed up sewer system. As numerous pumping stations across the region failed, all that unfiltered sewage went somewhere else. In an event like this, you have got millions of gallons of diluted raw sewage going into the river. That diluted sewage raises E. coli and bacteria levels in the water, which flows directly into the Detroit River. Mary Bowling with the MSU Extension and Michigan Sea Grant says part of the problem is decaying infrastructure. In metropolitan Detroit here, a lot of our sewers are what we call combined sewers, where our sanitary system and our non-sanitary system, the stormwater, goes into the wastewater treatment facility. And during heavy rain events, that combined system leads to problems. Whenever our storm events happen, where we have a lot of water, then we get those systems are overburdened and, and then we get the untreated water going out into our rivers and streams. The good news is that our ecosystem will naturally bounce back, bringing E. coli levels down in a matter of days. But a week long rain event will keep those levels high. If it just keeps on um, repeating over a few days, it's just going to be that much longer before the, the system can balance itself back out again. It's the second major storm to cause flooding in the last 10 years. And those who work in our local waterways are hoping this time serves as a wake up call to increase investment to keep our rivers clean. Infrastructure, you know, we need to fund more projects to deal with our sewers so that we're not diverting the sewage into our rivers in a big storm. If there are high E. coli levels, it may take days for that to go back down. County health departments do test waterways for E. coli, especially around beaches. And in this story on our website, WXYZ.com, we'll be sure to include a link to the Michigan Beach Guard. And on that website, you can find beach closures across the state. Reporting in Dearborn, I'm Brett Cast, 7 Action News. Brett, thank you. And